Hello, I'm here today to share my garden boxes with you. So I created these garden boxes this year and here's the link above. You could check that out. I created them from really old worn out boxes into this really nice setting here. And I just love them so much and it's so beautiful to look at from the patio. But you know, as pretty as they are, the most important thing about having a vegetable garden is having really great high produce. So this is not a gardening channel whatsoever. In fact, everything that I've learned here is from another YouTuber and her name is Garden Answer. Several years ago, I just got on her content and just devoured it all and learned so much. She's so helpful. But I thought it'd be fun for you to see what I decided to plant and then how I spaced everything and fit it into these boxes. So come with me and I'll show you how I did it. So as you can see, I do have some things in my bed already. I had some perennial herbs and then added a few new ones. I picked up some marigolds and my strawberries and raspberries I moved over from my other garden. So if you look at the back of the box, there are these tiny little seedlings and I have a really funny story about that. As you can see, there they are in my flower pot. A squirrel apparently took my black sunflower oil seeds and planted them in there and they grew. So I thought, why not just grab them and throw them in the garden and they're doing great. So there are four types of flowers that are really important to have in your garden. So marigolds actually repel bad bugs because of the scent. And zinnias attract ladybugs, which eat aphids, which can be a pest. Nasturum also is something that repels aphids, if that's something that you have a problem with. And sunflowers are great pollinators because they attract lots of winged insects. Now it's time to make a plan. There are so many things to consider, so let me share a few of the most important things when doing garden boxes. So companion planting is planting crops together that happily coexist because they don't hamper each other's growth. So just find a chart and go off of that and you can see what plants enjoy being next to each other. Next is intensive planting. This is where you space things really close together. You can take advantage of that by using trellises to make things grow vertically. This gives you more yield, it keeps moisture in the soil, and then also keeps weeds down. Succession planting is making sure you don't waste any space in your garden and something is always growing and then if not you use that space for something else. You can even repeat things like lettuce that have two different seasons. And then you have to remember to rotate your crops. That means moving them around and not playing the same thing in the same bed every year. That way the nutrients isn't sucked out because different things need different nutrients. And this way it just keeps rotating them and keeps them healthy. So now I know what I needed. I went to Lowe's. I was lucky because I had a great sale and their plants were so beautiful and it was the varieties that I needed. So in the past, I have planted my vegetables from seed. But to do that, it's very time consuming and tedious and kind of a large learning curve. So I was really happy just to buy my plants, especially since these were so beautiful. We ended up having to go to a private nursery to get some chives because they didn't have those at Lowe's. The prices were much better since they were having a sale at Lowe's, but it is nice to support your local nursery. All right, now it's finally time to start planting. Oh wait, I forgot something. All right, now I'm ready. Oh, there's nothing nicer than a brand new pair of gloves. I wore up my old ones building our patio a couple weeks ago. If you're new here and you haven't seen it, I'll link my extreme patio transformation at the end of this video. All right, now back to work. The first thing I did was made sure my soil was all mixed in and broke up. So I actually had some bags of composted manure I found my shed, as well as some leftover llama poo that my neighbor friend gave me. So I just mixed it in really good and broke up the soil. So now it's ready for planting. So these sage plants were taking up more than their fair share. They had a humongous root ball on them. They're actually considered a shrub and they're about three years old. So they really just needed a new home. I planted them in my actual flower gardens and they actually bloomed a few weeks later. I don't really use sage a ton, so I don't mind having that over there. Next, I put up my trellises. On this side of the garden, I put tomatoes, and then in the other box, I put cucumbers and squash. So I learned a really cool trick. If you bury tomatoes extra deep, those little knobs on the sides will sprout roots, and then it gives it a much wider base of support. So I like to keep my varieties straight, but I don't love the tags that come with these plants, but I really haven't found a better option. All the other tags that I've used are either plastic or wood, and they just don't last with the weather. The marker will fade off and then I won't be able to see what I planted. So if you have any ideas for me on things that maybe you use that you like, feel free to put it in the comments below. So I have really high expectations with this sweet pea. I've grown sweet peas before and they just went crazy. So I'm hoping that these just grow all the way up the trellis and over the top. 
So I got brave this year and I'm adding mint and chives. I haven't added them in the past because I know they are very invasive, but I tried this in-ground container planting method. It's supposed to stop them from spreading and then also drying out. I'm also really excited about my dill this year because my sister has a really great fresh pickle recipe that I wanna try. Last year, my dill was attacked by the black swallowtail butterfly caterpillar. We actually ended up collecting them and putting them in our butterfly cage and we had fun watching them grow, but I had to sacrifice my dill. And speaking of insects, check out this centipede that I found. I know they are all God's creatures, but I think we could do without this one. I wrapped up my planting. I finished the herbs and the squash and all the peppers. So every year our library gives us seeds for free. So that's always nice because it saves a little money. The girls had fun deciding what they wanted to plant. Planting with kids is never a perfect thing. In fact, I often have to go back and fix what they do. But you know, I feel like the most important thing is that they're learning and that we're making memories together. So I usually plant my leafy greens a lot earlier than I am this year. So I'm gonna use one of the companion planting hacks and I'm gonna use this trellis for shade. So as the tomatoes and squash grow, hopefully it'll give just enough shade for the lettuce and spinach so that way it won't get burnt. Now that everything is planted, it's time for watering and for mulch. For germinating seeds, it's really important to keep the soil wet, but as far as tomato plants, once they're planted, you should really let them dry out before you water them again, so about every other day. So I noticed my neighbor mowed their grass a little long, so I texted them and asked if I could rake their yard, and they said, anytime. Grass clippings are my favorite way to mulch a garden. First of all, I don't have any problem with seed usually like I do with straw. And then also grass clippings have a lot of nitrogen. So as it breaks down, it goes into the soil and it feeds the plants. Mulching also prevents weeds and then also keeps the moisture in and prevents diseases created by the water and the soil splashing up on the leaves. My garden has successfully been planted. So right after I planted the garden, we checked the bluebird box and this is what they look like. In only two weeks, they went from little babies to these full-fledged birds. They actually flew the nest the day after. And this is what the garden looked like after two weeks. This was me watering it almost every day. We had a drought and the dirt was so dry, but I kept up with it faithfully and everything grew. My seeds came in. I only lost one pepper plant, but I had a lot extra, so it's fine. Here's the beans. They all came in really nice. So now it's time to prune and to fertilize. Tomato tone is supposed to be the very best for your tomatoes. You can also use it on your other plants. I also put it on my squash. So you just kind of put it on and work it down in the dirt and then you do it every eight weeks. Next, you wanna prune. First, you take off any lower branches that are touching the soil. Soil-borne organisms can get into the leaves and then travel up the stem of the plant. You wanna make sure the plant has enough airflow as well and then grab off any suckers. Those are the little sprouts in the corner of each branch. They don't produce fruit and they just suck up all the energy. I have a pair of micro pruning shears and I couldn't find them for this video, but I'll link them below. Here I'm using just good old kitchen shears to prune my herbs. So I learned how to prune my herbs from a workshop class episode on the Magnolia Network channel. They said if you trim your herbs regularly, it keeps them from going to seed. And then also the more you trim, the more it forces it to produce. My favorite way to store my herbs are in Ziploc bags in the freezer. So this is a trick I learned from the MI Gardener channel on YouTube. So in order to tie up your plants, use elastic thread. That way it stretches as it grows and it'll never choke it out. I always like to tie mine a little bit loosely. That way it has plenty of room to grow. If you have indeterminate tomato plants, they can grow up to six feet. So it's really important to stake them and then tie them up so they have lots of support. So you might've noticed that my strawberries and my raspberries have these little arbors on them. So I put these up a couple months ago so I'd be ready for when they produce berries. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add the protective cloth and hopefully this keeps the birds out. I don't know if it'll actually keep the kids out. In fact, I haven't had any strawberries this year. I didn't even get a chance. They even ate the green ones. I guess that's okay. I'm excited for them to be able to have some raspberries soon too. The bushes are loaded. This kit was fairly inexpensive and really easy to use. I'll go ahead and link it down below if you're interested. So there you go. You can see that planting a garden is just so simple and it's even fun to have kids involved and help you do it. But the true test in having a very successful garden is in the maintenance, keeping up with the weeding, watching out for pests, knowing how to deal with that, and then also watering. 
So here in Ohio, we actually are experiencing a drought. It hasn't rained in over 21 days. The earth is just all cracked and dry. So I've been dragging my hose out here every single day and checking my plants to make sure they have enough moisture. So one of the things I had in my old garden box was a drip irrigation system. That was really great because it had a timer on the hose and it could just water it whenever I scheduled it to water and I didn't have to worry about it. I haven't set that up here on this one. It's actually quite involved. So I thought I'd make a whole nother video on how to install that. And then also I wanted to put a smart watering system on there, which is so cool and you can just control it with your phone. So no longer do I have to bring the hose out here and check the plants, you can just have it set up. So stay tuned for that in a future video. So I really hope you enjoyed this. Maybe you found a few tips that you can use to help yourself have a really successful garden and that you have a great season. Thanks for watching, bye.